Do you think that you could light a bulb mm -hmm. with a battery mm -hmm. and wire? Uh, light a bulb with a battery and wire? Mm -hmm. I try. Do you think you could light a bulb with a battery and wire? Yeah. Battery and wire? Well, yes, why not? Definitely. Okay, can you do that? <laughs> I don't think it would work, but I could show you how to try. from there to the bottom. Well, there we go. That's, that would be my theory, and I guess I'm wrong. It does not. Is there a way to uh, do it with just a battery and a wire? Do you know why that didn't work? I have no idea. Maybe it's not working because there's <laughs> nowhere to really hook it up. You don't have a car, and if you only have one wire, you need a, complete, a closed circuit. I know it's possible, but I don't know how to do it. Well, the way that, the way that, I mean, the negative charge is flowing, you know, flowing through. Uh, I don't know, but there's something very wrong. That's minus. No, I mean, I, I think if you had the right connections, like if you use these to power things and these lights, if you stick them in a socket, they work. So I think you just need to get like the right wires and the right stuff to connect it. Maybe a circuit board to light the wall. What does what a circuit board do for that? The circuit board helps um, conduct the electricity, and it, it connect. You can you you could even there's some circuit boards that you can just use without wires. Like you just put it in the right slots, and I guess they have wires. Guess I can't do it. Uh, do you know why it didn't work? No, otherwise I would have lit it. Oh uh, well, if I do it with a little light bulb, I just do this. <laughs> in which case, the the light just lights up. A bulb, a battery and a wire. Probably the simplest of all the circuitry that we can imagine. Back in the 1960s, the elementary science study group put out a curriculum guide called Batteries and Bulbs. It's been around for more than 30 years now. Sim the simple circuit is probably one of the most basic ideas in studying electricity. So why should college graduates find it so difficult? Well, we'd like to thank those of you out there who did send the faxes to us. And I'm going to go over to the easel right now, and we're going to take a look at some of those that are representative. This one up here is rather difficult to imagine, but I think this is a bulb, yes, and we have it lit, uh, lit. And there are some connections here. I'm not quite sure what they're connected to. But we do have, again, one here in which the negative and the positive poles are touched with the bulb sitting right on top. And the next one we have here is one of those bipolar batteries with the two connections on either side, the positive and negative. And they are connected to a bulb. And I'm not quite sure how, they are, how they're connected. But very often when kids do these things, it's, it's difficult for them to, to put the connections so that we can see them. And this one, last but not least, is the one that shows that the negative and the positive are connected to the bulb in such a way that the bulb lights up. Now, there were a lot of different views that came in. Their configurations were amazingly diverse. But we tried to put them into about four different categories. And just so you will be enlightened, while I look at these, Jim here is going to actually do these with the real thing. First of all, we'll take this number one idea, which turned out to be about 43% of the population's idea of a good model. And this is kind of the hanging, and as you can see, there's no cigar. In the second one that we have here, this is the, what we label as the cross wire model. And the cross wire model, which is Jim is crossing the wires right now, holds the wires together. <laughs> Connects to the positive and the negative. This is a new addition here. Touches it and nothing. All right, cross that one off. The next one that we come to here is the one in which we have the negative and the positive connected to the bulb in two different ways here, in two different parts of the bulb. One to the screws here on the side, which people often forget about, 
and one to the little button, which people don't often forget about. We're going to try that one, Jim, and voila, voila, we have light. Now, just because there was one other suggestion here, and that was that it only moves in one direction. In other words, it can only be done with the positive up and the negative down. So I'm going to ask Jim to reverse the battery and see if we get anything there. And we have liftoff. OK? So this is really not all that difficult in the long run. And uh, here we still have a little problem with the with college graduates. I'm going to go to one more thing here and just make sure that we're all clear so that when you watch the rest of the videotape, you'll be clear on what the students are trying to find. The bulb, as I mentioned before, is something that people are not really aware of, that these threads on the side are important. Most people think that it's just something to hold the bulb in the socket. If you look very carefully, you'll also see up here on the bulb a little solder joint, which is a connection from one of the wires that comes from the filament and attaches here. The other one does come down to the basic bottom. And now you can see that we have a path in through the filament and out, or in through the filament and out. And so I'll just connect this up like this. And there we have our simple circuit. I might want to add here, too, that if you're ever going to use batteries with your students in class, it's probably wise not to use the ones that can be recharged, because they may be, uh, have to uh, give a, search, a charge, which might cause a little bit of extra heat. Let's go to a discussion at this point. We might ask that very basic question. The graduates are having a difficult time lighting the bulb. What might this say about science learning? 